Hey guys, on today's episode of My Jeep and Me, we're gonna be taking a look at the windows, which is a common problem on the Jeep. One of the things that I have started to do is as each window flex track breaks, I'm actually upgrading to the 1991 version, which had a metal track, uh, the J track that goes up and down is metal and shouldn't break, where those flex tracks, the plastic, those little teeth snap off. Uh, I will say that I've, I've tried a lot of different brands Probably the favorite is the one that I get from BJ's Off-Road. Not a sponsor of the show, uh, but a good place to get and source parts. So let's dive into these windows. Right now, uh, the left rear window needs to be adjusted. It's working, but I think something came loose on the window and, uh, and it's about halfway down. And then the, dr the uh, passenger seat, the front passenger window has the original flex track um, design on it still I haven't changed it out and it is locked in the up position and so we need to see whether it is a uh, issue with corrosion on the uh, switch which I don't think it is or most likely it has something to do with the flex track and needing to repair it or replace it let's take a look okay before we get started let me take just a second and go ahead now if you're here obviously you found me through search looking at jeep information go ahead somewhere down here maybe it's on this side I always get confused hit the subscribe button and then there's that little bell right beside it if you'll go ahead and hit that now you'll get notified of whenever i make changes uh, or add new videos so you won't miss out on what we're doing on this 1987 jeep grand wagoneer I've already gone ahead and unfastened the armrest here. I've taken that out, gotten it cleaned up. I removed the nice attractive faceplate here uh, that comes off. Right now, everything is pretty much unhinged. I've got a tool here for body panels and there are attachment points along the way. Some of them have come out and for those, I have these, uh, I had, have some, a few screws to hold the bottom on um, that are hidden inside of the carpet down here, which I've loosened up already. So you can see here the panel's loose. Once we take this off, um, I'm gonna actually go ahead first and pull the uh, panel clips off. Okay, so that's loose now. All right, so we got that loose. This right around here. I've got it finger tight already to make this easier. So we're going to support that. And I'm obviously doing this with only two hands here. One to hold it on or hold up the uh, door panel. And one to take this off. And whatever you do, <laughs> don't lose this little screw here. You can just simply pull this out. You can see here those retaining clips. Go into the doors along the side here. And right over here, you take it aside. If you're doing the stereo install, I understand this makes making your audio sound a little better. But guys, gosh, if you have a Jeep like this and you have the flex track, please, 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 don't put stuff on there. I think that's the nicest way I can see it. Right down in there, see where all that goo and all the grease is and that plastic track. It's what runs on a J track in here like this. And the only way to get it out is we gotta take this junk off. But geez, if you own an old Jeep Grand Wagoneer and you have the flex track, pretty much I think 91 I know had them. I don't know when the crossover happened. Jeep used uh, Jeep was notorious. They used anything they had in supply until it ran out and then they switched. So I don't know what your Jeep will have. Mine is an 87, so it definitely has the plastic, plastic flex tracks. If you have a flex, flex track, no matter uh, if you fix it once, you will fix it again. There's just no way around not fixing a flex track multiple times. Take this speaker out. One of the things you'll notice is on these old Jeeps, I prefer to use power, uh, hand tools over power tools. It just, you know, less can go wrong when you do stuff by hand. It takes a little longer, and I will use, uh, 
you'll see me use you know electric here power drill here in a minute but for the most part my recommendation is take the time and just do it by hand you're gonna you're not gonna mess anything up if you do it by hand when you do it the other way you're just asking for trouble on me see right there see we've got a I mean, they're pretty rusted out so that's another reason to do things by hand if we can is we're gonna get these out get that off Got one up here, one over here, and that comes out. You got to take that bracket off to be able to get that flex track out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all these out here, here, and uh, and then we'll disconnect it from the window and what have you, and pull it out and swap it out for a different one. Here's what that looks like. There's just a little U-shaped bar that goes in there as a support bracket. This clips right here. That's your motor. So I've turned power on. I have not disconnected the, the uh, battery yet, which we will. Door locks. Oh, we're here. See the door locks working? That white stuff is uh, spray lubricant that I put on there. All right, and then the window. Nothing. Oh, oh, look at that. Huh, it works. <laughs> it's magic. You'd think I fixed it, <laughs> but I didn't. That's all for this door in this episode. Um, the reason I'm not gonna fix this one, it's working. And because we're gonna go around the other side, and I've got a window that's not working, and we're going to fix that one. Here, if you can see that, hopefully you can, this is what was attached to the window, and that plastic ring right there snapped. All the tension on these J tracks, a lot of times this is what breaks. There's a circle right here that's attached to that glass right behind it. That snaps, as you're seeing there, and when that snaps, it's all she wrote. Whew, it's getting hot. In this dark shirt, I'm gonna have to get change here in a minute. All right, so we're sitting here. 1987 Jeep Grand Wagoneer and this window is dead. Uh, the flex track broke and what broke off is this piece which is what actually lifts the window up and it's just a piece of plastic. You can see here it's just a little piece of metal and a piece of plastic that snapped off and this is into the window that makes it go up and down on the track. And this is actually a newer piece. I've probably replaced this within the last year and um, it's total trash, it's junk. I don't remember which brand I got. I ordered some of these from online cheap, uh, from Crown, and I ordered a couple from BJ's Off-Road. From talking to other people, BJ's Off-Roads, there seems to be higher quality. But again, these things break. This is the nemesis of anybody uh, with power windows on these. It was a major luxury for these to have power windows and power locks compared to what was out there when they were built. Uh, but now, based on more modern technology, this stuff is just junk. So what we're actually gonna do is we are going to swap out all the guts in this one, which has the flex track, and I'll show you, you know, how that works. But I'm also going to upgrade that to modern modern 1991 at least these are out of a 1991 jeep we're going to do away with ever having to replace the flex track again by using these new um, more upgraded adapters the first thing we've got to do is we got to rip this old track out and i need to go get some tape to be able to um, take this class up very carefully here we are going to get our painter's tape doesn't get very sticky pull this window up get all the way up in there and as a safety we're going to take tape this painter's tape
tape the glass. What I'm using here is just uh, frog tape, painting tape. Grab one of some shop towels, rags, something like that. Some, this is gonna be a messy job. And you're gonna wanna be able to wipe your hands off. And because mine has already broken from away from the window, I'm not gonna mess with that, have to mess with that to get this part out. Oh, I'm missing that one up. You gotta take this bar and get it off. That's where you're gonna want your shop towel. Just because this is all really pretty greasy. And this is where it becomes kind of a dance act. Trying to maneuver everything so that it'll come out. And uh, it's been long enough that I gotta remember how to do it myself. You can see why on a previous one, I just ripped the darn thing out didn't care about bending it but because this is still good and there's some layer it goes now we're getting somewhere I think all right I did it all right so this is just gonna try to slide out there you go. That's what it looks like on the inside there. It sits here. This is the flex track that you replace. And what you would do if you were placing the flex track, so what you're looking at here is, you can see right here is where this piece was originally on here and snapped off. And I have it all the way down. But you could actually, if you had power to this, you could run this all the way down. Bottom line is, you use the toggle switch and this goes up and down. And you can see right in there how the little teeth work sometimes these little teeth will break off that was the first problem i had i've replaced this this is a replacement flex track this is definitely a replacement i just don't remember where this one came from and i've had the heads snap off two or three times and the first one the teeth broke and it stripped and it wouldn't catch and uh how we got to here and i've already cleaned this i am gonna Go in there and get some lubricating spray and spray this down real quick. And actually, I'll show you that here in just a second. I've also got to unattach the glass from the current bolts to put on here. Got a new shirt on. <laughs> what you're seeing right there is uh, the microphone clipped to the inside of my shirt. And uh, it's so darn hot, I had to go in for a while and, and uh, cool off, change shirts before coming back out here. It's, it's July here in North Carolina and it's hot. This is what's going to go in there and attach back to the glass. What we're going to do real quick before we do that, glass, slot it back up. That's just going to hold it up for us for a little while. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just enough to hold it with the new J-Track, which we've already lubricated. And now this one you can see is nicely fastened right here. Not all these clips are there because again, it's old plastic. And while we're, let's see, let me put the key in the ignition real quick. Let's put the new one in. So it clicks. Now that it's in, toggle the switch. Watch, watch the lifter right there. Down and back up. All right, I'm gonna unclip it. Now we're back unattached to the power and we're going to this one's going to be a little easier to get in because it's a whole lot smaller. We moved the glass up already so it's out of the way. 
All right, all the way down. I think that's going to be the secret. Should have power now. All right, now we got to get it attached to the glass. It's that four inches, three inches from the top, so that I can get down in here and work on. You'll have a little bit better view of what I'm doing. First thing I got to do is get the glass on that side. There we go. That works. And there goes up. Window goes down. Window up, window down. All right, so we're going to go ahead and call that a wrap here today as we worked on the rear window there on the passenger side. If this was helpful, give us a thumbs up. Not helpful, give it a thumbs down. Leave some comments down below. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that may come up when you're working on yours. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.